What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. That's Mike. Yes, it is. I'm this Chris. Is, this is Chris. That's Daniel. That's Daniel. <laughs> Old friends now, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, Daniel Wu is back, back as you again. can see. Yep. Yes. And uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna hang out with us, and he's gonna do a little community uh, Q and A with us. So that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, not only did we get a bunch of community questions for the trivia that Daniel was just a part of, we got a bunch of um, a lot of. A lot of Q&A stuff. A lot of people that wanted to talk to you. Oh, they personally. wanted to know some things from you, my man. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a large sure. follow <laughs> you have a large following, and uh, we tried to, to narrow it down because we know that uh, we don't want to keep you too long. So we're going to sure. try to... Try to hit you with some cool, some cool questions. Um, I want to I want to answer probably the most popular question out there right now is when is season three? Oh my gonna god! End? Well, that that, that, is good, that, that is a good that is a good one. So what I've been told is like January, February, somewhere sometime around there. Okay. Okay. So 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 it's a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But yes, I, they haven't given us a firm date yet, but we're we're told that we can tell people it's sometime in January, February. Okay, now can I ask you if it's three B or season four? Because we're getting. What I know is that it's three B. Okay. Yeah. So it should be technically three B. Any word on season four? Can you say no. anything about no. that? No, because I think okay. what they're going to do is still look at how three B does then before green lighting four. They always do that to us. All right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, we got to promote the show. That's right. All right. So That's stop right. what you're doing and just promote the show. Yeah. Gets me angry. I don't know why, but no, I do. It know does. Why. It does. Um, it gets Chris very upset. It, it does, All right. Let's man, get, let's you know? get right into it. All right. Let's shall, get into shall it. Shall we? Let's go into it. Thank you, All Daniel. Right. That was cool. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. This question, Daniel, comes from Cool Guy Jay, which is a big, uh, a big presence. He has a big presence there on, mm -hmm. on the community uh, sites. Um, he wanted to ask, will we ever see Sonny get his own signature weapon um he said he loved season one your regent weapon setup uh so will right. we ever see something like that like your like moon sword yeah we we actually talked about it for season three and it was gonna happen but then it kind of didn't fit into the writing so then we kind of exited it out so i think in the future season maybe four or five there i definitely think for season four sunny has to have an iconic weapon so whether it's made in there or he suddenly has it i don't know but i think season four we'll see a new weapon because i think it's about time for sunny to have one well you know i was gonna say you've got you know you got thunder and lightning you <laughs> yeah. know i yeah. mean yeah. um actually what about the trailer for season three because there was a there was a post going around in the, in the group and someone was like he's gonna have a, a, a his iconic sword he's gonna have and they were showcasing in the in like towards the end of that right the one where you know it says step into the the, the view of these characters right. And you see Sonny, you know, pulling out the, it looked mm -hmm. like a, was that anything? So that is a special sword Sonny's going to get for the rest of season three right. to deal with Pilgrim and all that stuff. And it comes from a very special place, but I don't want to reveal that right now. No, 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 hey. Guys, we don't want, yeah. we don't want any, any trouble. We don't want any trouble. I mean, you yeah. are EP, but still. Yeah, it's not, it's not a trouble right. thing. I think it'd just be more exciting for you guys to find out who it's from when yeah. you see it. On uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to cool. be in our, in our live reaction. Okay, go all ahead. Right. Hit, him, hit him with the next uh, one. We'll go. All right. To uh, second question. How do you feel about Sonny eventually having another love interest? Um, will it forsake all other love or does he feel Vale would want him to find happiness again? Or even that mother figure too for, for little baby. Hammer, mm -hmm. hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah, this is from hammer. Angela S. By the that's way, that's Angela yeah. S. I'm yeah. sorry, Angela. That's a very is she a mother? Is this a mother mothering question? Um, <laughs> uh, maybe it's too soon right now, but I think at some point, you know, it could be possible. Um, you're not going to see it in season three, that's for sure, because I think it's way too soon. I think it's oh, still yeah, yeah, fresh yeah. in his mind, right? Yeah. Um, be kind of douchey of him to to get a <laughs> new girl right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you notice, there are there have been girls that have appeared in the season that have, I don't know, flashes of veil in them. Yeah. And you kind of, you'll catch maybe Sonny's reaction to those girls. Um, if you look carefully. Cool. All okay. Right. Very yeah. good. Very good. What do you got? Okay. Next one. Uh, another one from cool guy, Jay, he comes up with, with some of the best questions. Um, it's a bit of a long one. So bear with me. If, okay. if some of the badlands characters are loose adaptations, uh, you know, like the monkey King. So, Sonny being like again, this is from Journey to the West. So, mm -hmm. uh, so loosely based on say Sonny being the Monkey King, or uh, uh, Baji being Piggy, or mm -hmm. MK being an incarnation of the Monk. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we assume that Moon is the Badlands version of Sandy, or is that honor possibly reserved for somebody else? No, I think uh, that's right. I mean, we don't 
really like Baji, obviously, um, because of the name is in Chinese. Yeah, right. Well, in in in, in the Monkey King story is Jubaji, right? Jubaji, right? And so that Baji comes from that. And then um, Sunny is from Sun Wukong, is the Monkey King, and then MK Monk, right? MK Monk. Um, those are direct correlations. I think that's a good good um, analogy, though. Um, I, I don't think Al directly made that mm-hmm. um, connection, but I think it is because you'll yeah. see in the next half of the season how uh, Moon becomes an important part of the team. Yeah, and I think that's a whole exile. I think the, the important thing with Sandy is that there was an exile to the cat that character was yes. exiled at yeah. that point and moon yeah. is self-exiled at the beginning of the season and yeah. um you know what uh, off the top of my head there was another question that the community wanted to ask um mm-hmm. real quick mk's name well is are those initials does he does does mk yeah, even know uh, is it uh, a name yeah. does he like is it a thing or is it is does he not question his own name like yeah yeah so you guys don't ever get to see a script but we see it as m dot k dot Right. You know, no. Yeah. That's okay, what we yeah. see it all the time. So, um, you know, it's not like Jackie Chan's son who's named JC. Right. Have you heard? Have you heard of that? Yeah. His son is named JC, as in Jackie Chan, but it's spelled J A Y C E. Right. So, so it's very <laughs> weird. But uh, with M K, um, his name. Yeah, I think it's more. I don't think it stands for anything in particular. Okay. Like. Is there a first name or a last name or anything like that? But I think, you know, and for us, the creators, it really kind of relates to being monk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. great. I, I, I yeah. mean, I, I think it's great. Um, you know, that it, it's one of those things you never need to have answered, you know? Yeah. Well, in any other form than that, I suppose. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, here's another one uh, from Cool Guy. So with the fight choreography being primarily Wushu based, will there be any other fighting styles incorporated uh, say like more MMA uh, fight moves and things like that. Yeah, I mean we did a little bit here and there, right? Um, and we hope to incorporate more. Um, but you know, honestly, ground fighting doesn't look so great on film. <laughs> um, all the grappling, I, I enjoy watching it. Yeah. But you know, pe- pedestrians who don't know martial arts when they watch MMA fights, right? And it goes to the ground. It gets really, really, it, really boring. Yeah, 20 minutes right? of, of ground fighting, which is... Yeah, and for me, it's amazing because it's like a chess match and you're watching oh, these people just roll and yeah. transition, transition, It's very transition. technical, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very, very technical. I don't like doing it, um, but I like watching <laughs> it's it. It's tough, um, yeah. Yeah, and even when we do it for fake, it's rough. Like, you know, you're, you you didn't see those guys with the cauliflower ear, right? It's because oh, you're constantly getting yeah. your ears yeah. bashed on stuff, and I hate that. I really hate that. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, uh, we did it in season one in one of the fights when we we're storming um, the widow's house, I think it is, with yeah. me and Quinn. Yeah. Uh, this guy jumps off the thing and we do a bit of grappling there. That's exactly, then, yeah, that, that was the example that uh, he had yeah, given exactly. to you. So, um, yeah, but we try to incorporate, we basically try to incorporate whatever is visually interesting. Mm-hmm. And so, again, jujitsu is, is amazing martial art, but it's just not so visually interesting. It's just hard to cut around that. So we might do certain locking and yeah, certain there. moves not, or something. Yeah, but we're not going to roll for like two minutes. You know, yeah. it's just boring. Just give you a little bit of a taste. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Something else. Very cool. All right. Um. So how about we switch? We've also sorry, sorry, okay. stay on that subject. We've yeah. incorporated like Krav Maga moves, um, other stuff, karate, taekwondo style kicks. Yeah. You know, those kicking and all that stuff. So it's a it's a it's a wide variety. Although it's like you said, wushu based, but we try to depart from that. To keep us interested as well. How about, will we ever see a uh, Daniel LaRusso crane kick? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is on everybody's mind. So that's what. Yeah. <laughs> How you, about are that? You right? watching, are you guys watching Cobra Kai? I, uh, I've, I've seen it he twice wa- already. I watched like, the yeah, first okay. handful, but it, it wasn't so bad. They, do they do it? Do they do it in it? He does it, but it's like he does it as a as like a it's like he a does joke. It? He doesn't. It, it, uh-huh. Yeah, like he. Oh, okay. It, not so uh-huh. much a joke, but it's not. Like he attempts, yeah, it, it's very cool. Right, right. It's very cool. Have you right, seen it yet okay. or not yet? No, I haven't had a chance to. I want, oh, I want it, but I yeah, absolutely. I see. Whenever you have free free time, it's not that long, and it's it's on it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube, Red. Yeah, Red. So it's you have like to pay, the, you have to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that would be. I mean, if you want Danielle Edge in my family plan, you just you can just watch it. It's fine. <laughs> no, I'll get, I'll get it. I'll I'm sure, get my it. brother won't mind. You know. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it is. It's definitely worth watching. Um, I was gonna also say that, you know. <laughs> oh wait, now I lost my train. Of thought. You guys, when you guys, when when you guys train all all the actors and you you don't you don't train them. You're, you're training them like 
not specific moves, but your training techniques so that yeah, whatever's makes sense at the time. Because if you're in a fight, you're not going to, you're not going to square off and like, okay, let me get in my stance. Let me like, obviously it's like, whatever's going to work, whatever reflex happens to happen at once yeah. is what's going to get the job done. And, and yeah, obviously that's yeah, what like, you guys do the way you do. What we like to do in training is to just do, just drill basics, like all kinds of basics, like up into like jumping kicks and all that kind of stuff. Roundhouse. We do that, you know, a couple hundred or a few hundred of them a day. Um, spinning kicks. We do all the basics so that that every actor has a bag of of letters, mm-hmm. right? And then these letters, I, I think I explained this to you before, yeah. get put together in words. The words get put together in poetry, and that's what the choreography is, right? Yeah. Yeah, and great. so, so you know, oftentimes the young ones like like Aramis will be like, "Oh, I want to learn more of the crazy moves, crazy moves." I'm like, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> Just like a martial arts teacher would, you got to get your basics down because if your basics are weak, you can see it. You can see it in in the choreography. And you can see it in the fighting and it makes it look weaker. And so you have to have a strong foundation. So your stances have to be strong. Your horse stance has to be strong. Your bow stance has to be strong. Your, your, um, your, um, kicks have to be straight leg. You know, there's no bent knees there. Your toes pointed or heel heels out depending on the kick. Like you have to be aware of all that stuff before we give you complicated things to do. Right. And so they always want to jump into the choreography because they're oh, young of course, guys. Yeah, so they always of course, want to. Yeah. And it's so fun. Always, yeah, and we bring them. We always bring them back and just drill the the basics. And well, that's yeah. how I taught wushu from the very beginning. Is like yeah. all my students went through one year of basics before they were allowed to do anything else, right? And so a lot of people dropped out, but that's a good way to filter out who's going to last. Absolutely, and who's gonna yeah. Not, right. Heck yeah. Um, but again, same thing for our show. It's a compressed amount of time because it's only five weeks that we got with these people. So again, it's just drilling that and making sure that their, you know, um, their form is correct because there's lots of people out there watching the show that know martial arts and to, and, and they'll know that a lot of these actors aren't martial arts based. So it's important for us to bring out that authenticity and make it right. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I mean, I'm sure you send them home with a lot of homework, even when you guys aren't filming. I'm, I'm sure they, there's a lot of time, uh, just to practice and to keep doing like, like he says to MK in, in, uh, season one. I saw you practicing your forms last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I do that to the uh, to Ali and Aramis. Like they'll send them texts, and I'll be like, are you, "Are you stretching right now? What are you doing right now?" Like, like if they'd be watching TV, I'm like, "Hey, why don't you be stretching and then watching yeah. TV, killing two birds with one stone?" You know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Just ride them. But they're also more resilient too. So if they didn't, they can <laughs> yeah. come in in the morning. Whereas, right, some of the older guys are probably like, "Oh, these yeah. kids," right? <laughs> So it's interesting, like Air, Ali and Aramis have the opposite issues. Like Air, Ali is very flexible, but she doesn't necessarily have the um, snappy speed. Yeah. So we just work on that with her. We work on, you know, quick muscle, uh, fast twitch muscles training. Cool. And then with Aramis, he's like very athletic and he learns things really quick, but he's not flexible. He yeah. wasn't flexible at all to begin with. Right. And yeah. then and then we just slowly, slowly tortured him over you time. Him and got down. Him oh, that takes yeah, a while, yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes we literally like hold his leg up and just pull and pull and pull until until we get oh, to the right point. Yeah. But um But hey, it's different than when, you know, when my when my teachers were training and when I went to China to train, the coach had a stick and he'd hit you with Oof. it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you didn't do, do something. Do you remind them of that though? You do tell them that, I, I t- right? I tell them that's what happened to me. I, and that obviously never happens to them, but yeah. um, otherwise, otherwise the unions would be all over my ass. Uh, but, you um, can even put one in the corner and just look at it from time to time. <laughs> but that's what my, my teacher used to always tell me. He's like, Americans, you're lazy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you see, we get hit all the time and that's why we're good. You know, the fear... <laughs> Fear is important sometimes too. Yes, it to is. Learn yeah, it's yes, a good it driving growing up, growing up with an Italian father, he didn't have to hit us. Oh, that's yeah. true. He could yeah. just snap the belt or something. Oh, just yeah, give please. That I look have nightmares about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get into discussions with um, people all the time about millennial kids who are never spanked or anything. Mm. It's like they don't know that fear at all. Like nope. I grew up with that fear. But that's why there's I have respect for people. You know what I mean? It's like it was instilled yeah. in me. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. They never had that. I'm gonna call your father. Oh, yeah. And it's like, okay, fine. Right. fine. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm much, tell much, father, much yeah. different world. Um, okay, how about we yeah. switch gears real quick? Um, yes. we, we talk a lot about Badlands, but we want to talk about Daniel. Okay. So um, I wanted to know, uh, tell us what it's like to, to what, is, what it was like to film Tomb Raider and be in a film like that. Wow, that was, uh, it was interesting because it was five months in South Africa, in wow. Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, five months, man, yeah. Yeah, it was a long time. It was a long time. And it was it was a very odd experience for me because I went straight from season two 
I had two weeks off, I had Christmas and New Year's, and then I went down there for, for the filming. Wow. And so to go from like literally six days a week filming every single day, 10 to 12 hours, to going to that where I was working maybe two or three days a week, I, wow. kinda, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do with myself, and my family wasn't with me. So, yeah. oh. so I was just like, well, what do I do? I haven't been alone like this in a long time. You yeah, know? yeah. So I, it took me like a month or so to figure out what to do with all this extra time I had. So I just went out and explored and all that stuff. But I was... It's a first of all, South Africa is like one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Uh, I was married there, you know, uh, in 2010. My the reason is my wife, years and years ago, she used to be kind of like follow this hippie uh, EDM music trail thing, and she ended up there. <laughs> and she ended up on this farm where this kid, uh, well, a good friend of hers was marrying this kid that that lived on this farm, and she fell in love with that place. And then the father is like, it's like it was like it's like 400 acres wow. this farm. And he's like, oh, since you love it so much, I'll sell you four acres for ten thousand dollars. So, so she bought, she bought four acres of land for ten thousand dollars and built a house on it. Wow! And so when I met her, um, she she told me about this place. I was like, well, let's check it out. And I went down there and I fell in love with the place. It's it's actually kind of like living in Badlands, like in the RV situation. Yeah. <laughs> you're in the middle. You're in the middle of nowhere, and right. you kind of just gotta like survive on your own. And it's cool though. It's very. It was very cool. Awesome. And so I've, I've had a really close connection with South Africa, but I've never really been down to Cape Town uh, just for a couple of days only. And so being there for that long of time was amazing. Um, it was a good experience. It was very different than, than Badlands, much more relaxed. You know, when you're not the number one on the call sheet, you got a lot more time. So it's, yeah. it's, it was nice. It was actually nice once I got used to it. Um, and the crew, crew was amazing. You know, we had a very, it was very similar to Badlands, very international crew. Mm -hmm. We have like people from England, U.S., South Africa, of course, America, um, all over the place. And there, there were, they were down there. And then they did a really good job of making the places that are not in South Africa, which is actually every single place in the movie, look like the place it's supposed to be. So, like all the Hong Kong scenes oh, were shot there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, what's incredible, like wow. the scene where Laura comes first to find me on the boat. Right. Yeah. And all those houseboats, they built all those houseboats and put them in this tank. Ooh. It's like three feet of water. And then they put green walls around the whole tank. But that tank was probably half the size of a football field. It was huge. Yeah, it's amazing right? how they do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. Yeah, and then they put up these green walls around it so they could CG the Hong Kong background into it. But the houseboats and all those things were exactly like you see them in Hong Kong, right? Yeah, yeah. Even, even on the boat, all the little props, like the calendars or the chopsticks or whatever, were were from Hong Kong. And then they brought in all these extras from Hong Kong. So everyone's speaking Cantonese. There's like hundreds of people walking around from Hong Kong. And, you, and you're on these boats and you feel like it. it was, plus it was hot like Hong Kong too. <laughs> so it felt like Hong Kong, but then you look off in the distance and there's like Table Mountain over there. Right. right? Yeah, and you're wow. like, whoa, this is trippy. Like you're having a, a, a surreal yeah. experience, right? Very, very good job of doing that. Then that boat, so that boat, the keel of the boat is obviously not there, so it sits in the water. Then they took that thing apart and put it in a stage to do all the, the storm stuff. Yeah. Right. Wow. And that entire boat, which is like full one to one scale, is probably 130 feet long um, on a gimbal that like rocks like crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. So during the storm. So that's also in a big giant green room. But there's water. They have water cannons shooting at the boat for the waves. Yeah. Then they have like lights, obviously, for lightning and thunder and all that stuff. And so so that thing rocks and, and it actually feels like you're in a storm. And I remember like before we actually shot any of the storm footage, we're standing there getting ready to shoot it. And the cameraman is there handheld standing on the boat. He's got an assistant holding on to him. And we're, nobody knows what it's going to be like. Right. And then me, me and Alicia are on the boat and then they start going. And that shit was crazy. It was like <laughs> a real, real storm. And like I'm falling over the place. I'm like trying to make I mean, all the acting that's happening during that storm is real because it's like was yeah. really scary. It probably all helps it. a little bit too. Make you know, make oh, everything yeah, more believable. Bit. <laughs> you know, I prefer not to have to act in those kind of situations mm. because the worst thing is like staring at a tennis ball and thinking it's this big giant dinosaur. You know, it's yeah. like the worst. You just feel so phony doing it. But when yeah. that kind of situation, it was real, real, real. Like, awesome. and then when they cut, the cameraman was like. Uh, I don't think we can continue on doing it this way because <laughs> he was like falling all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they had to dial it back a little bit. So they dialed the movement on the gimbal back a little bit so that it was a little bit safer and a little bit easier to handle. But still, even then, it was pretty gnarly. It's filming, awesome. I think we filmed five or six days for that scene, oh. you know. And there were bits like I have to say, Alicia, for the first time doing an action movie, she's one tough cookie. 
Like she took some major, major hits. There's that one scene where she opens the door and the wave hits her. Yep. They like really, they really did that. They hit her in the face with a wave. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, you know, it's this giant cannon, probably I don't know, like two feet in diameter, filled with water. And at the bottom is an air compressor, and it shoots out the water, right? And they literally, like, from the bottom <laughs> on the ground, they shot that thing up into her face oh. and knocked her down. Like knocked her down on the ground, and then I have to come in behind her and pick her up. And I'm kind of like peeking out of the wall, watching it, <laughs> and I see it hit her, and I see her hit the ground. And in my reaction to rushing to her to see if she's okay, all that stuff is all real because I thought she they fucked her up, you know? Yeah. Like, it looked bad. It looked bad. And it turns out she did get injured because like a piece of wood from the door frame broke oh. off, and it hit her right in the forehead, right? Oh, wow. So. So I can't even tell if she's acting now at this point, right? Like I'm yeah, picking yeah. up, trying to grab her, and she's like screaming in pain and blah, blah blah. I don't know if she's acting or not. Like I, and then <laughs> when they act, when they scream, cut. Then I realize she's actually hurt. You know, yeah, it was wow. it was crazy. It was that that scene was pretty intense. Um, the action stuff. They, you know, here's a note. It was like, okay, we're um, the coordinator comes up and he's like, okay, we're gonna do some martial arts and stuff with your character. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, we're not gonna do that because it's not sunny. I'm like, I, you know, that I can do that stuff, but this character is not that character. He's maybe a good brawl fighter. He, he's barely gotten in a few bar fights in his life for sure, but he's not someone like Sonny who's like really adept at killing people, right? Yeah. So he's not gonna fight that way. So let's come up with a different way to fight. So we had to deconstruct and go backwards and kind of make a cool fight that looked cool, but doesn't look like as skilled as a martial artist would fight. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. What was the difference between doing uh, the choreography there and what you're normally used to when you, when you do Badlands? Okay, so the biggest difference, and I find this is the biggest difference, the way of doing action in the West versus Asia, is that there's a big disconnect. And this is not a, a criticism, but there's a big disconnect between the choreographer, the cinematographer, or the cameraman, and then the editor. Right. Okay. In in the way we film action for Badlands, it's already kind of prearranged in Dee Dee Master Dee Dee's head. Right. Right. And then Stephen also works on it with the shots. So they kind of know already how the whole fight's going to come out. The moves, not necessarily we do that right on the spot, but we know each shot leads into this shot, leads yeah. into this shot, leads into this shot. And it doesn't go any other way. So when we assemble it and hand it over to the main editor, that's what they get and they don't mess with it at all. Um, what happens in the West is. A choreographer creates action. Maybe it's cool, maybe it's not. Then the cinematographer is his job to capture it, and there's no real discussion between the choreographer and the cinematographer how they capture it. So usually what a cameraman does, if they don't really know action that well or don't want to get involved in the action, they go wide, medium, close, right? And, yeah. and then, then the editor has the job of taking all that stuff and trying to make an interesting action scene out of it, right? Yeah. So usually that's where you see, like, really quick cuts, shaky camera crap, and then you don't know what the hell's going on, yeah, right? Nah. Because it wasn't really captured well to begin with. And so for me, like I honestly, like I firmly strongly believe that good action, the reason why Badlands is that way is because it's all planned out, you know, it's, you know, it's not storyboarded, but it's all planned out by Master Didi and Stephen Fung way ahead of time. Yeah. And they know what, how it's gonna flow, and all those pieces fit in that puzzle exactly that way, and it can't yeah. be switched around any other way. You know, we can make it shorter or longer, but the sequence has to go that way. There's a logic to it. And that's why when you see it, you guys see it. It's amazing, but you also understand the logic and you also see what's happening. Yeah. Like you see every single move. You understand why that guy flew over there because there was a close up punch or a kick to his gut or whatever, you know, all that stuff. And so all those tricks that like Hong Kong movies have been doing for like 30, 40 years, maybe even more than that have conglomerated into this one style, whereas the West really hasn't figured that out. They they think it's like John Woo, slow motion and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's one style, yeah. but that's not it. It's it's really about the coordination between the three um, people, the three teams, is the yeah. fighters, the cameramen, and the editors. Have you have you read any of the articles uh, by our friend Munib on Twitter or Facebook where he's written about yeah. stunt-centric and choreocentric? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic stuff, a, yeah. He has it on point. Is he a like? I want to know his background. Is he a film guy or what? Like, because he knows that stuff really, really well. He, well, he well, he's a um, not, not a, he's a writer. He's a journalist, okay. and you know, right. and, and 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 you know, and obviously he's you know, I, I'm not I'm speaking for him now, but right, sure. you know, uh, you know, I want to definitely give him the shout out because I loved his 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 one article about it turned into three articles, which were absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um, amazing and super insightful. Because to me, it was like, oh yeah, people in the West don't really understand that. Mm -hmm. I, like, it, it dawned on me because I'm, you know, I'm jaded because I've been there well, for yeah. 
20 something years and I've been watching Hong Kong film my whole life. So I never right. think about it in that way. But yeah, he broke it down really well, really, really well. Yeah, it was fantastic. I, you know, I couldn't it's agree more. It's just funny. So, it's like, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say it's, it's the same thing when, you know, it's when you're when, when I was a kid and I'm sure the same thing for you, like when you see American style, but then you see the Chinese style and it's like, there's a difference there. Like even as a child, yeah. it's like knowing the difference between live tape television and like film, you know, how it looked right. different. Right. You know, you could see yeah, that no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Wow. And I think like, so for example, on Tomb Raider, you know, that little sequence when we first escape. When I mm -hmm. run, we run, like I knock the guy out and I run down these rocks and I jump down and then I got shot and yeah. I fall, right? I must have had to do the, just that sequence like 30, 30 or so times. It oh. was crazy. Like it was crazy. Like the whole sequence, like all thing over and over and over and over again. And like I was getting really frustrated because on Badlands, you know, we're doing the section we need and then we go jump to the next section. We, jump, we don't waste time yeah. filming stuff that we know is going to be on the editing room floor. We just don't do that, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, and also we can't afford to do that on television, the way, the, the pace we're going at. Yeah. We've already got a luxury that we've got an entire crew filming action on alone and we can't waste that time. So we don't, we don't do that. And it was, it's really tiring and it's also dangerous for the performers because the more you do a stunt, the more you can get hurt. For Batman, it's really like, we're like a one to four ratio, meaning we've got, we pretty much get it within three to four takes, yeah. you know, yeah. and we get that one, that one out of the three or four and then we move on because people get tired and as you get tired, you can get more injured, you know, yeah. and that stuff. So it's, it's, it's important right. to think about the performer in it. And that in Tomb Raider, they didn't think about it. I don't think they thought about it at all. <laughs> no. right. Alicia, I mean, she got banged the hell up uh, many, wow. many times, wow. you know, so but I think, you know, she didn't, she didn't know that was her first time. She didn't know any better for me. I was just keeping quiet in the background going, man, this is, this is not yeah, the most efficient tongue, way to yeah. do all this. Yeah. Bite your tongue and then have four days off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, hey, I got to feed a cheetah water out of my hand. So, uh, well, <laughs> okay. There you go. That was, okay. That was pretty awesome. Um, how about, um, you don't want to keep you too much longer, but, uh, you got a few yeah. more minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, so you, you, you know, besides filming movies and, and Badlands, you're also a very busy guy elsewhere. Um, do you want to talk about some of the cool stuff that you've been doing lately? Like uh, when you, you spent time in Shanghai recently, uh, you're uh -huh. a descent spokesperson. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what the, about the... Uh, this Brightling the The Brightling uh, yeah, sure. cinema, what is it, the Cinema Squad? Like what's going yeah, on sure. there? You're doing a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, I've always had these things going on in, yeah. in Asia. So I've always been a spokesperson for different brands and things like that. Um, and then Brightling was the kind of first global campaign that I've been involved in. And this is like, um, uh, they what they decided today is have these different squads, they call them. We are the Cinema Squad. So the Cinema Squad is me, Brad Pitt, Charlize Theron, Adam Driver, the four of us. Mm -hmm. um, so we represent film. And then there's people that represent... Uh, oh, surfing. Know, and then, surfing yeah, and all that, yeah. Or exploring or this and that. Yeah. Related to all the pro the different kinds of watches they make. It's, it's not, a bad, so, not, not, not a bad group of, uh, of people to be hanging out with, right? No, not at all. Not but, at all. Let, let's ask him this. Now, we kind of got a similar question, but you're just bringing this up kind of... Out of the, out of the other three besides you... Which one of them do you think would be able to fit in, maybe as like a new character on the Badlands or something, and maybe uh, see, you know? Yeah. So uh, this who, is who would pretty, fit in? <laughs> pretty easy one for me because Charlie's kicked some ass in Atomic um, Blonde, you know what I mean? Right. And, so and Fury was, Road. Yeah, and Fury Road. Like she, she's like very impressive. Yeah. In terms of her physical ability, like um, she's such a great actress at one end, but then she'll put in the work to do that hardcore, like tough stuff as well. And like, you know, I've been around, there's people that don't like to do that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll try their best not to do that. Even though they're doing a movie where it's full on action. Right. Yeah. And, and, and she, you can see the commitment. Like yeah, I saw the behind the scenes footage that she did and all that stuff. And she was just hardcore. I think she would be better fighter than any of those two guys, actually, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Right? Cause I think Brad doesn't really do that stuff. And Adam, he's really big. So he's, he's a tall dude. dude. And so I don't think he has that kind of, you know, uh, agility. He's got the presence, but the agility. Yeah. 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 I mean, he could, he could beat ass, I think, but, but I think Charlize would be the, the, the real damager. Yeah. yeah. Give him a lightsaber and give her a sawed off shotgun and you guys will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you, so <laughs> talking about all the stuff you're doing, how do you balance between your like work life and your home life? What, what's that like? 
So it's it's a lot easier now. Like as soon as my daughter was born, which is five years ago, my life became much more clear and focused. It's like, so I slowed down work. I used to do like three or four movies a year, wow, and yeah. in my highest, I did six or seven a year for like three years straight. Yeah. So that's why I have like you know almost seventy movies. Yeah, right. My, yeah. My, exactly. I think, but then I got to a point where I was like, what am I doing all of this for? Right. And then once I had my daughter, then things became re- like really clear. So I was like, OK, I'm just going to pick and choose the projects I really, really want to do. And then all the downtime, not worry about it. Like there's in Asia, people like to work hard. Mm-hmm. So you sometimes feel bad when you're not working. Like <laughs> I should be working. All these people are working. And then you feel like, you know, self-loathing and all this other crap. Right. Yeah. It's hard to be there and not work because it's just uh, the energy is so ama- you know, amazing there. Everyone's working so hard all the time. You know, people are working until 10 or 11 at night all the time. Wow. And so you, you, when you're lazing around a little bit, it, you don't feel right. And so that was part of the reason why I moved back to the States here mm-hmm. four years ago to be able to enjoy more family time. Also, it's different lifestyle for me over there. Yeah. Like oh, I cannot walk out on the street with my, with my kid. Yeah. Like I can't go to a park with my kid. It's just it's crazy. Like everyone wants to tell the camera phones. Yeah. They're like trying to take pictures of the kid, you know, all that kind of stuff. But here, you know, even though people know me from the show, it's not as crazy as it is in Asia. You know, I haven't been around for twenty years and in, in, in a household name here like I am over there. You yeah. know, and so it's a lot more um, enjoyable lifestyle for me, family wise, all yeah. that stuff. So that's how I do it. So now. And also my dad is 89. My mom passed away four years ago. I realized time is precious, so I want my kid to be around my dad as much as possible. Yeah. So I spend all my downtime here, and I only do work on stuff that I really like working on now. Because at this point in my life, it's like I don't need to impress anybody. I don't need to do anything I don't uh, want to yeah. do. And so yeah. like, it's um, just you know, enjoy it all. And so like I, I figured I worked really hard for 20, 20, 20 years. Yeah, and now it's you about now it's time. Relax. Yeah, now it's time to enjoy all the other mm-hmm. stuff. So you see me like I built a car last summer. Yeah, you know I'm doing all these things that I've always wanted to do but never had time to do, and yeah. so I'm doing all that, and then including my family and all of that kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah. uh, um, now I find the balance much easier. Before it wasn't. I was just like working constantly, choo, 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 choo. Mm-hmm. and then it actually kind of made me a little insane. And now, now I feel like really balanced. Good. That's good. Let's go back to the car for a second, because that was my next question for you. The Tonto or Tanto? Yeah. Tonto. Tonto, right? Tell us about that. The, the Datsun. You, 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 uh, what, how'd that come about? So that came about because I was sitting around in South Africa with not much to do. And I started watching. Well, I've been watching car shows for a long time, like, right. a lot, all those yeah. shows. And I was watching some car shows. I'm like, you know what? I, I just want to do it. I just want to do something. I want to build a car from the ground up. And okay. so, um, so from from South Africa, I went on this website and started looking for donor cars. And I found one, and I bought one through through the website, and had it shipped to my friend's place. And then before I even got back to the states, they had already ripped it all apart for me mm-hmm. and sent it off to do all this stuff. And then so for me, you know, because I'm a design, I study architecture, mm-hmm. and the reason why I'm in film and all this stuff is because I I just feed off of creativity. Mm-hmm. Like I love creative energy, and it doesn't matter what it is. It could be film. It could be building a building, it could be drawing a drawing, it could be making Legos with my daughter. I just like making stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I also love cars, so this is the perfect way to kind of combine my design sense with 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 my passion for cars, and also my passion for making things. And so, then you know, I didn't actually do the hands-on building. I was I wasn't around for it because I was mostly in in South Africa during that time, and I was over in Dublin for season three when when it was being built. So, but I did all the part sourcing and all that stuff. So I found all the parts from Japan and all these different places around the world, put it all together. Then I visualized the whole thing, drew that out, had a visual done. Um, and then we built built the vision. So it's just like a house or a yeah. building. You, know, you you have this idea of your building, you sketch it out and it becomes the building and then you get to enjoy that thing. And same thing with the movie. It's like you have an idea, uh, you, 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 you start to write a synopsis, then the synopsis becomes a script. And the script is something that you you get a bunch of people to help you build that thing, and then you have it for forever. Yeah. And it yeah. becomes one of your creations, a baby of yours. And so the yeah. Tonto is like another one of my creations, one of my babies. You know. Yeah, oh, it's very cool. Awesome. I love I love seeing that stuff on there. Yeah. And you just didn't you just recently win an yeah, award? I just, I just yeah. well, we went. I drove Instagram. all the way down to Long Beach from up here in Oakland, which was scary in a vintage car, uh, <laughs> yeah. but made it down and back. So it was called the JCCS, the Japanese Classic Car Show. It's the biggest. Um, Japanese classic car show on the West Coast, and we took it down there, and I won first place. That's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. That's right. You can see a lot of that on your Instagram. We're always, uh, we're always yeah, I post, uh, checking I post a lot about that. that. Yeah, I no, it's awesome. That. That's awesome. Yeah. I think there yeah. was even a couple of pictures of your daughter, like, changing the tire, or helping She's you work clean on it, the car. Right? <laughs> so, okay, Here's, my wife rides horses. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a show jumper. She competes a lot. She was competing last weekend. Um, it's a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so, so I'm hoping that my daughter doesn't get into that. She'll choose the car stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and so, like, whenever I, I try to like work on my cars when she's around, and she sees me doing, it, and then she wants to get involved. Yeah. And then I'm like, she's only five, so there's not much she can do. But I'm like, oh, here, do this, do that, do that, yeah. just to get her interested in it. Because right now, thank God, she's bored of the horses. Like. My okay. wife drags her over there because she can't ride fast on them. <laughs> it's boring for her, so she just sits on the horse and she's like, I don't want to go anymore. So I, I hope the plan is working out perfectly. Right yeah. now is that she gets into yeah. cars. Because honestly, it's, cars are a lot cheaper than horses. So yeah. Well, yeah. I can tell you, I have two kids and I can tell you, I, I pray for you, man, that your plan <laughs> works. But listen, man, they will change up like that. So no, be I prepared. Know. <laughs> I, know. I know. So I'm just subtly kind of putting it. I mean, ultimately... I want her to be a good martial artist as well. Yeah. But I'm being very, very careful about how I push that with her because I don't want her to, you know, have a bad reaction to it and push away from it. You know, like same most, thing like, oh, it's daddy. Yeah. You know, mommy has the horses and daddy has martial arts. Right. It's, yeah, yeah right. exactly. In fact, one of my martial arts brothers that I grew up with, he has kids. So he sends them to a martial arts school and is taught by somebody else because he doesn't want he doesn't want to deal with the daddy teacher issue thing, you know. Yeah, so, right. So he says when they get to an age where, you know, they're teenagers or whatever, then they're old enough, then he'll start teaching them. But for the foundations that, that he's has them over. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I yeah. think I might be yeah, doing that's that. That's a real good time. idea. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, right. Okay, well, I mean, I think that's going to do it. We did time, one, yeah. one last thing. Uh, can you sure. tell us anything about Comic-Con this year? I mean, it's getting close, but... Uh, man, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything from AMC since June, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's up. Um, doesn't look good if I'm, I haven't heard about it by now and it's yeah. the end of the month. Right? When is it exactly? October 4th to the uh, 7th. Is right. That the 4th right. To the 7th? So yeah, Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. And we'll keep I, pushing. We'll keep pushing. Yeah. Yeah. I seriously appreciate your efforts. Like I love seeing that pop no up problem. every time on your Instagram and seeing all that stuff yeah. and the numbers keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. But yeah. No, we, know, appre- we, think... we just appreciate just the community and the fans and, uh, yeah, and, I mean, and, you know, at you the guys. least, that was a great way of bringing the community together. And so I thought it was a great yeah. um, effort on your guys' part. Thank you for doing that. No problem. Yeah, no it, problem. It, thank it you for coming fun, on you know? and giving us all this time. Yeah, also. and, and you know, thank you for being on the trivia. The trivia show is something we decided, you know, while we're waiting in the break, let's do something fun that keeps it, that can bring new viewers on and bring new people on and let, let's let sure. keep it in the zeitgeist and let people, you know, trivia is fun. People love And having you guys on, you know, obviously helps it get out there. But it's also fun. Like everybody wants to see their favorite actor of their favorite yeah. show. It's it's great. You know? It's great talking to you for us. You know, from from being from the show that that we love so much. So, like we have said, we got so many questions, and as soon as we said that we're having Sherman on and and, and you on, it's just like everybody just wants to talk to you. So it's just cool. it's it's awesome that you that you gave us a ch- a chance and you and yeah. Sherman and coming on and and um, pretty much saying no problem. When do you want me? You know, yeah, yeah, no, not which, a problem. Yeah, if you come up that. with any other ideas to help, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. So let me know, guys. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think we're gonna do um, like a recap thing. We we had mentioned um, mm-hmm. Sherman even said that he would like to. I told to Sherman I say, listen, we're gonna be doing this end one. of the month. Yeah. I'm like, did you are you are you watching season one? He's like, right. oh man, all right, I'm gonna binge it this weekend. I'm like, all right, well you don't gotta go. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm only on episode four right now. I'm still working right. on it. You know, but yeah, it's something that we think that will spark maybe more interest into the show um, if we kind of uh, yeah just get as much content yeah. as we can about 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 Badlands. That's cool. And then I you know I tried to get Ali, Aramis, and uh, Lewis on, but they're all working right now. They're all pre- so, yeah, they're all crazy. Yeah, no, we appreciate so let me, that also. Let me I'll hit, I'll come back around, swing back around to them and see if we can get them on too, because I'm sure they'd love to be on with you guys. Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd cool. Be Daniel, uh so once again, where can people reach you? At that Daniel Wu on Instagram is the best way. Okay. All right. And cool. you can reach us, of course, at Third Person Podcast on YouTube. I hope you all enjoyed uh, us speaking with 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 daniel of course but check us out at third person pod on facebook and on twitter and you can have a listen to us on itunes as well and daniel one last thing is there anything coming up that you want people to know about that you want them to check out that you're going to be doing or you're going to be showing up somewhere 
Uh, I can't think of anything at the moment. All right, we'll All see right. it. You'll post yeah. it. I'm spend sure spend more time yeah, with the family. Don't worry because... about that. Yeah, <laughs> you're no. not in China right now. Spend no. some time with no. the family. Yeah. Right? <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you so much again, Daniel. And uh, we'll cool. we'll be talking to you soon. And guys, we will see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Take care. All right. Thanks for watching. If you want more Into the Badlands content, please check out our playlist up there in the top left. And if you're like me and you love the 80s, why not check out the Retro Squat YouTube channel? Or you can click one of the videos right here.